Have you ever wondered why you put off important tasks until the last minute only to feel stressed and unsatisfied with the end result? Well, get ready to uncover the root cause of why we procrastinate and how to conquer it once and for all. Are you excited? Welcome to our channel. In today's video, we have an incredible topic that affects all of us at some point in our lives. We're going to uncover the secret behind procrastination. Procrastination is like an invisible wall standing between you and your success, whispering sweet excuses in your ear. But the thing is, procrastination is not invincible. By recognizing the triggers and underlying causes, we can start breaking the cycle. First, let's understand the psychology of procrastination. Procrastination, my friends, is a sneaky little monster that lurks in the shadows of our minds. The first step in defeating it is understanding its roots. It turns out that procrastination often stems from a fear of failure or perfectionism. Yes, that's right, our fear of not being good enough holds us back from taking action. We set such high standards for ourselves that it becomes easier to avoid doing something altogether than risk falling short. But guess what? Failure is a natural part of growth, and no one has ever achieved greatness without a few bumps along the way. There are four main types of procrastinators, the performer, the self-deprecator, the overbooker, and the novelty seeker. Let's see those types one by one. First, the performer. The performer is the type of procrastinator who tends to be overly focused on perfecting their work. They're obsessed with making sure that everything is perfect and can often become overwhelmed with the task at hand. This can lead to them spending too much time on tasks that don't need to be perfect and not enough time on the tasks that do. The performer often feels a lot of pressure to perform well and can be very hard on themselves if they don't achieve perfection. They may also have a fear of failure, which can make them overly cautious when it comes to taking risks. Second, the self-deprecator. Self-deprecator is the type of procrastinator who tends to be overly self-critical. They often feel guilty about not getting tasks done and can be very hard on themselves for not meeting their own expectations. This type of procrastinator may also have difficulty saying no to others as they're scared of letting people down or disappointing them. The self-deprecator often has difficulty believing in their own abilities and can be their own worst critic. They may also be overly reliant on external validation and approval, which can make it hard for them to complete tasks on their own. Third, the overbooker. The overbooker is the type of procrastinator who tends to be overly busy and always on the go. They may be constantly trying to do too much, leading to a sense of overwhelm and exhaustion. The overbooker often feels like they have too much to do and not enough time to do it, and can get overwhelmed by their own to-do list. The overbooker may also be a perfectionist, which can lead them to spending too much time on tasks that don't need to be perfect. They may also be constantly trying to prove themselves and show off their accomplishments, which can make it difficult to relax and focus on the task at hand. The fourth one, the novelty seeker. The novelty seeker is the type of procrastinator who's always looking for something new and exciting. They may be easily distracted by new tasks and ideas, leading to them spending too much time on tasks that don't need to be done. The novelty seeker often has trouble focusing on the task at hand and can become bored easily. The novelty seeker may also be overly reliant on external validation and approval and may have difficulty believing in their own abilities. They may also be scared of taking risks and can become overwhelmed if the task is too difficult. Did you find yourself on one of those types? If you do, please let me know in the comment below. Bear in mind that no matter what type of procrastinator you are, it's important to address your procrastination in order to improve your productivity and well-being. Since we already know what procrastination is, let's dive into the best strategies for crushing procrastination. Don't forget that one major cause of procrastination is a lack of clear goals and direction. Have you ever caught yourself wondering, what's the point, or feeling overwhelmed with your workload? Shaking off procrastination begins with creating a well-defined roadmap towards your ambitions, something that fuels your fire and thrashes any resistance standing in your way. Let's arm ourselves with a collection of powerful strategies guaranteed to obliterate procrastination. In order to do that, we can use different techniques. Technique number one, eat the frog. 
This concept, coined by the brilliant Mark Twain, reminds us to tackle our most challenging tasks first thing in the morning. By devouring the frog right off the bat, we gain momentum, increase our confidence, and silence those procrastination demons. Next up, let's talk about time management. Successful individuals swear by the Pomodoro technique, where you set a timer for 25 minutes and work solely on your task during that time, followed by a 5-minute break. Rinse and repeat. This technique keeps procrastination at bay by breaking your work into bite-sized chunks, making it more manageable and less intimidating. Now, here's a mind-blowing technique. Accountability. Find yourself an accountability buddy, a friend, or even one of us in the comments section. Share your goals and deadlines with them because once someone knows your intentions, you're more likely to follow through. Plus, it's incredibly motivating when someone's cheering you on and keeping the fire beneath your feet. Dear viewers, if you want to kill the beast called procrastination, we must cultivate a powerful and productive mindset. It all starts with visualizing success. Close your eyes and imagine yourself achieving your goals, basking in victory and accomplishment. This visualization fuels your determination, your drive, and helps you push through those procrastination barriers. Another technique to supercharge your mindset is positive self-talk. Instead of saying, I can't do this or I'll do it later, replace those doubtful phrases with empowered ones like, I can't handle this and I'll tackle it right now. Redirecting negative self-talk to positive affirmations gives you an immediate boost and annihilates the procrastination monster creeping within. Remember this, success isn't built overnight. It's forged through consistent habits. To overcome procrastination, we need to replace old habits with new, powerful ones. Start small by incorporating a morning routine that sets the tone for your day. It could be journaling, exercising, or reading. Anything that jumpstarts your productivity engine and leaves procrastination in the dust. Now, here's a game changer. The power of rewards. Design a system where you reward yourself after completing tasks or reaching milestones. These rewards can be as simple as a sweet treat, binge watching your favorite show, or even a fun outing with friends. Incorporating rewards creates a positive feedback loop, reinforcing your productivity while making procrastination feel less appealing. So, by understanding the psychological factors behind procrastination, recognizing emotional blocks, and taking intentional action, we can break free from its grip and achieve our full potential. Remember, procrastination is merely an opponent waiting to be crushed. Equip yourself with the right strategies, foster a productive mindset, and build daily habits that propel you toward success. Believe that you're capable of greatness and it's time to unleash the power within you. So, let's kick procrastination to the curb and embark on an exciting journey of productivity and self-discovery. If you found this video helpful, give this video a like, subscribe to our channel for more life-altering content, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell to stay up to date. Until next time, I wish you all the best.